Today I'm going to go over the very basics of how to get started playing your crystal singing bowls. So you don't have to be a musician to play, but you want to be really sensitive to the sounds and the dynamics and the tones that you are getting out of your bowls. So first thing, you want to make sure that they're positioned in a good spot for you so that you can stretch your arms out and that they're not too close um, in the way for you to play. So positioning them best, uh, when you start to play the bowls, you might wanna position them in front of you so that you can um, watch um, how you're moving around the bowl because it's kind of hard um, as you start to place them on the sides and play to it at the same time. So placing them in a comfortable position in front of you and you wanna make sure you're holding the mallet correctly. So you can hold it um, kind of like a pencil, two fingers on the top. You can even put four fingers. It might change as you're playing the thumb underneath, a nice firm grasp in the middle of the mallet. And with the rubber mallet, it's the same position. You wanna make sure that you keep your arm and your wrist uh, relaxed and not tense as you play. So now the uh, angle onto the bowl. So when you're playing with the suede mallets, you'll have an angle with the stick coming away from the bowl. And with the rubber mallet, you're gonna have the opposite angle so that this wooden part does not catch the crystal bowl. You'll be uh, uh, contacting the bowl about two inches below the rim and making sure that you maintain a that distance from the rim all the way around. So you don't want to slide down and, and play down here. You want to make sure you're consistent on your position all the way around with the rubber mallet. So as you start playing, you can start with a chiming the bowl or tapping it very lightly. You don't want to ever put any force against the crystal bowl. So tapping it to begin and then you can start to move around the bowl. The bowls get very loud very quickly so even just two rounds around the bowl can create a very strong sound. So you want to be able to control your sound, the volume and the dynamics. So the dynamics is how loud or how soft you can make the sound. The faster you go around the bowl, the louder it will get quickly. If you want to control the sound, if it gets too loud, just take the stick away or slow your speed down on the bowl. I'm going to keep a very practice more with your left hand if you are not used to playing with your left hand. So um, you can start the sound again with a tap on the bowl and then bring it around. Practice keeping the sound very smooth and consistent. You don't want it to be bumpy. Um, you want it to be smooth and consistent.
it's better not to have any loud overwhelming sounds so control the volume with a slow movement you can practice one hand at a time to start so that your left hand can get used to playing sensitive to the sounds so that you're in touch with the sound that's coming. You want to be so sensitive to what you're hearing and feeling so that you're producing sounds that are gentle, that are nourishing, that sound um, very sweet and harmonious for the listener. If this is being used for sound therapy, if you want to use these bowls for sound meditation, you have to be able to really master the sound so that you create a very harmonious tone. Um, and this is something to be really um, training your ear on as you learn to play. And it takes a bit of coordination too. <laughs> 